Hi everyone, my name is Nuru. My full name is Nuru Hidayah bin Tiabu Baka. I am the head of MUIS Halal Certification Strategic Unit. It is the unit that issues halal certificates to FMB who are interested uh, in halal certification. Halal certified restaurant, that means that a restaurant has been audited by MUIS. The way that the food has been offered for sale to Muslims are permissible according to our dietary requirements. Whereas for Muslim-owned businesses, that means that the restaurants are owned by Muslims and therefore, as Muslims themselves, they are obligated by the religion to serve halal food. It's approximately about 1,400 thereabout. So that's the number of halal certified establishments in Singapore. If you want to put it in a bigger context, it's about 1 in 12 premises are halal certified in Singapore. There have been an increase in the number of halal applications in general, including ones for eating establishments, the likes of restaurants, snack bars. Halal actually means permissible in Islam. And beyond just no pork, no lard, there are other things that may make a food non-halal. It could be things like intoxicants, which could include alcohol. It could also be things like blood. So German sausages are not halal for Muslims to consume because blood is not something that is allowed for Muslims to consume. Other things could be, for example, the animals that needs to be slaughtered. So for a person or a company who wants to make halal claims, they must be very familiar with all these requirements. They should be prepared to back this claim up when asked by the Muslim consumer. The slaughter will need to be a Muslim and then the slaughter will need to say that the meat is slaughtered in the name of Allah. It can say Bismillah or in the name of Allah as long as the name Allah is mentioned. The knife that is used has to be very sharp so it should be a clean cut once and the animal has to be healthy. The animal will need to be treated in the most humane manner as possible. In order to apply for Muis Halal certification, there are some prerequisites that first have to be met by the company. So first and foremost, it has to be licensed by SFA. Similar to the process of applying for SFA license, you have to go through a government portal license one. Once they submit an application, then there is a processing fee that needs to be paid. We will then set an audit date to audit the premises and then of course have all the supporting documents in place for when we come down to do the audit. When a company put in a halal application, so we will first do a desktop audit. So as the name implies, you know, a desktop we sit in our office, we'll review the submitted information. So typically that would be the floor plan, the ingredient listing, the menu listing, the members that make up the halal team. From the submission, we'll evaluate whether the company is ready for the next step, which is the site audit. Typically we'll work from the receiving, so the warehouse, and then we'll go to the production, and then after which we'll go into the packing. So the records that we'll check for includes the invoices to make sure that what have been declared by the company are indeed the items that they purchase day in and day out. We will also look at the halal certificates. The higher risk or the high risk items, we call it like the meat item, the poultry items, flavorings. We will ask for the halal certificates. So these will also be checked on site. Last but not least, in the closing meeting, we will inform the company how well they have done or performed against the MUIS requirements of halal quality management system. And then we'll share with them what they have done well and what they could do better. And then they would need to respond to us regards on how do you want to close the gaps. When they close the gap, that's when we'll do a one more review of the audit report. Then uh, we'll put it up, the team will put it up for recommendation. And then the approving team will then review and will approve the application. The way that flavours are manufactured, it's very complex. We have a lot of multinational flavour houses in Singapore. There are flavours that you can get from natural raw materials, but there are also flavours that may be obtained from animal sources. So to make sure that the flavours used in halal certified products are from uh, permissible sources, make sure that flavours have a valid halal certificate. The halal certificate is valid for 12 months or one year and if the track record or compliance record of the company is good then we may consider giving a two-year track record so if you see the halal certificate this year is 2021 and if you see that they have been given a 2023 validity that means that this company has pretty decent track record
So the major benefit is actually the visibility that it is indeed uh, permissible for Muslim to consume. And of course, the other one, the intangible really, the benefit for Singapore in general is that it increases the common spaces for us to mingle with our non-Muslim um, fellow Singaporeans. Lah.